Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. <laughs> Oops. There we go. Hello and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and I forgot to se- select my microphone as my in-channel. So, <laughs> I did a whole introduction to nobody. Anyway, as always, most professional podcast around. Joining us this week, we have Michael. Hey, guys. We have Eugene. Hello. We have GB from Hawaii Con. Aloha. And we have Stuart the News Guy. Who isn't dead. Who isn't dead this week. He's, he's, he's returned for being one with the Force, and he's back with us again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and we may or may not get EJ later. Um, he's currently a bit busy, so... EJ's never on at first, is he? No, no, he always jumps in about five minutes in. Um, so anyway, this week we are looking back at 2015 and looking forward to 2016 and just sort of working out what we're going to talk about. So I think first up, I'll let uh, Eugene go with the list of those that are no longer with us. Okay. Um, in February, uh, Gary Owens, who was a voice actor for Space Ghost and Batman, passed away. February 27th, Leonard Nimoy and Andrew Lesney from Lord of the Rings. Uh, I'm sorry, Andrew Lesney was in April. In May, Grace Lee Whitney from Star Trek. June 7th, Christopher Lee from pretty much everything. Everything. (laughs) Uh, April 17th, Yvonne Craig from Batman and the original Star Trek. April 30th, Wes Craven. Uh, September 20th, Jack Lanson. He played the first Jimmy Olsen in the the first Superman TV show. Oh, wow, that's going back. Yes. Uh, October 13th, Bruce Hyde, Star Trek's Kevin Riley. November 4th, Melissa Matheson, screenwriter for E.T., and she was former wife of Harrison Ford. November 5th, George Barris, the creator of the Batmobile. And, uh, yes, or what, not yesterday? A um, couple of days ago. Couple of days. Couple days ago, uh, Jack Wingreen, the voice of Jason. Boba Fett. Huh? Jason Wingreen. Oh, J- I'm sorry, Jason Wingreen, the voice of Boba Fett, passed away. Yeah. yeah. So we we had a long list of losses last year, but it's just yeah, it's kind of sad. Yep. They will be missed. But they leave with us a legacy of characters and worlds that we get to explore every time we we watch their work. So, for that, we thank them. And for that, we remember them. Yes. So say we all. So say we all. (laughs) Okay, moving on. Looking back at... We'll we'll do the first half of the show as looking back and the second half as looking forward. Um... So, looking back at 2015, what are the highlights for you guys? I have to say, the highlights for, for me and Dave has to be the, the Tim Rose interview. Like, that was awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely right up there. Um, we, I had to take a towel with me when we did the Tim Rose interview because somebody was drooling across the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. Then... I'll admit I was extremely excited. <laughs> you, you were like... A puppy. You're bouncing around all over the place. <laughs> it's Admiral Friggin' Ackbar! 
<laughs> to be fair, if it was you and McGregor, I probably would have gone white in the face. Yeah, no, if it was you and McGregor, you wouldn't have made it through the door. You'd be on the ground catatonic, just sort of sitting there going, <laughs> and, it, it, and it'd be like, um, do, you want to, do you know CPR by any chance? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that was definitely spectacular. Oh, so, let me think. What movies came out this year? We've got Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. First one that comes to mind. Oh. Yeah, we've got the other one. It starts with a star. Um, what, what, what star, was it? S- star, star sucks. Citizen? Star citizen. Oh wait, no, that's a game. <laughs> it's it's also, another it JJ Abrams movie. movie. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, let's see. There yeah, was Star Wars. What's what's some yeah. Star Wars? Some minor thing came out. I'm not so sure. Yeah, it's, it's the Tony setting records across the board. <laughs> so, just a little. Just a little. It's only a hundred million. It's only a hundred million away from knocking Avatar off first place. Yeah, which considering it did that in a day. But that's domestic. That's domestic, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's that's domestic. It's still yeah. a long not, ago. Yeah, yeah well, it, has, it hasn't opened in China yet, so. Exactly, I know. That's like. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, well, that opens in China. Oh boy. <laughs> what are these records hey, that you speak of? Up. It's actually going up against Sherlock's um, winter special thing that's apparently a huge thing in China. So we'll have to see how Star Wars does against that. We lost GB. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, I guess... I guess I'll go ahead and say my... Probably my favorite thing from this year. Um, I got to go with... I got to go to the Kennedy Space Center and watch... The uh, SpaceX CRS six mission launch and got tour of the f- facilities and everything. I really got to see a lot of what sci-fi is inspired in our society through our space programs. And then, of course, we had the successful landing of the Falcon Nine a couple like two weeks ago, and that is just a, mental, a monumental thing for uh, for our society as far as spaceflight goes. Yeah. Oh, and we have some, of course, sci-fi stuff to go like. Uh, TV stuff to cover. I mean, this year brought us the first true science fiction like production slate from the Sci Fi Channel in God knows how long. Almost a decade. <laughs> yeah. We had three shows and by the way, of course, um sorry Stuart if this is your if this is part of your news, the renewal of uh the expanse. Meh. We have all three new shows have been renewed for season two, which is unheard of on the Sci Fi Channel. Okay, so that's what the what's going on? Skype just I know you guys are still there, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not here. I can't see the call screen anymore. I'm I'm trying to add GB back in and it just it crapped itself. <laughs> so technical issues. Do 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 Let's see if I can fix this by going to... And while, he's trying, while he's trying to figure that out, we had uh, Supergirl came out this year. Yeah, that's, um, that's actually done a lot better than I gave, than I gave it credit for. Okay, yeah, I so... caught up to it. It's actually pretty good. Whoa, that's quite loud. What is going on? Uh-huh. I'm in a call with you guys. But Skype yeah. says I'm not in a call at all. Well, I think we broke Skype again. I'm sorry, David. I can't do that. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the funny thing is, I can't even end the call that we're in. I mean, we can. <laughs> I, I know I can. Okay. At least I can. I, I can exit out of it. Okay. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset my Skype. So that means we're all gonna get dropped. Yeah, everyone's gonna get dropped. And, uh, uh, this is live on air, fixing the problems. <laughs> Okay, so technical issues aside, it's fixed. We we're all back in the call. Um, yeah, just no. we broke Skype. Skype is now sort of fixed. So moving right along, where were we? That's right, Michael. What it was Sci-Fi giving out ten? It was what is it? Three new shows from Sci-Fi uh, Channel in the. Uh, wow, my brain has just died. Um, three new shows. You've got Dark Matter and and a mini series. Yeah, and a mini series. Actually, two mini series technically. Um, all came out this year on Sci-Fi Channel. You've got Ascension, 
you've got um, Childhood's End, Dark Matter, Killjoys, and uh, The Expanse. The Expanse. Took me a second, I got it, The Expanse. Um, the three series, all three of them have got the three TV series, Killjoys, The Expanse, and now I've forgotten the other one. Way to go, Dark. brain. Dark Matter. I've all been given to another season next year, so woohoo! Sci-Fi Woo. Channel is finally sci fi again. Mission accomplished. We can fit, we can end save sci-fi now. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, you know, that's always my worst fear is that, that it would it would become pointless. <laughs> I was like, oh god, what's going to happen then? No, because we still have to bring science back into the discussion because so much of sci-fi these days, I mean, maybe there's a big digression, is not about the science fiction, but it's about drama, it's about soap opera, it's yeah. about... <laughs> you know, it's about procedural dramas, more like a crime thing. You know, very few of them actually delve into what attracted me to science fiction, and that's like bigger ideas. Like the original Star Trek was about big ideas and about how to redesign our society into a whole new society, and then going into seeing these other societies that had done it even differently, and and then how does technology affect us, and how do exactly? You know, yeah, I mean, really. Big, big thoughts and big ideas, and um, that really pushes our whole society um, forward. And most of the science fiction that's being produced, it's so backwards looking. You know, I mean, we had on the first Star Trek, we had the first interracial kiss, and you know, I mean, you'd think by this day and age, you'd have like a ton of in intergender stuff going, like having some major character like change gender every other episode or something like that. You know, yeah. I mean. But we're not there, you know, we're back to like more, you know, the 1950s style science fiction where it's more action adventure yeah. and the male lead doing something heroic, you know. And so I think that we still do need to save sci-fi. Yeah. Well, that's true, but we do also have things, thankfully, I mean, believe me, I'm never going to argue we don't need save sci-fi. Oh, yeah. After, yeah. After, after four years To be perfectly honest, looking at the state of um, America from the outside, like, a lot of people around the world do. You guys don't necessarily need safe sci-fi over there. You just need safe sci. <laughs> lots and lots oh, of safe sci. sci. Oh, <laughs> oh my but god, no, we mean, need safe science so much. <laughs> we also, we also this year did get some more science-oriented stuff. Yeah. Um, Interstellar didn't have as much. It wasn't totally scientific, but it was a lot more than some other stuff. And then The Martian, which was fantastic. Oh no, yeah, The Martian was really great. Yeah, and you also had. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson brought the Cosmos back. Yes. That yes. was spectacular. Wait, Cosmos wasn't this year, was it? No. That no. Was, it, was a, it was actually a couple of years ago. It was. Yeah, but, I was say, God it was damn it. Ago. But Neil deGrasse Tyson came out in support of Trek over Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, that's this true. Yeah. yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson, in the insane remote off chat you are listening to this, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he also says Pluto's not a planet. I don't like him for that. Well, there is a, there is a reason for that. I, I, I'm aware of this, and this is where I'm going to say I don't care about the science. It's a planet. Yeah, okay, well then, you're unscientific and you're a hillbilly. <laughs> Goodbye. This is why I like science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, the, the, also, just for, for, the, for those who don't know what Michael's going on about, I'll, I'll spell it out in cliff notes. Um, in 2008, Neil deGrasse Tyson and the, and the astronomer something or other group somewhere, can't think of what they're called right now. Like, a lot of things. Names just... Gone. Anyway, um, they were astronomy uh, union, something? something like that, and they were trying to work out how to designate new objects they were finding out in the Oort cloud. And because they're finding lots of sort of objects that weren't quite planet sized, and like either we'll have to start teaching everyone about all of these sort of smaller planetoidy type objects and calling them planets. But that were larger than Pluto. That were larger than Pluto. Actually, larger than Pluto and Pluto's moon, which is almost the same size as Pluto, which is sort of funny. Um, and the thing was, they're sort of looking at it going, how are we going to go about this? And they said, okay, we need to sit down and we need to science the crap out of this. What do planets have that these to things the don't Martian, have? Right? Yes. The <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and they said, okay, well, planets have cleared, for the most part, the majority of the debris out of their orbital path. They've got a relatively circular orbit. They're, 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 they're relatively spherical in shape. 
and they listed about a, a so it was about four or five categories of things. And they said, okay, how many of these other objects don't fit this? And when it came time to look at Pluto, they went, well, under our new rules, which makes um, Ceres not a planet and makes the half dozen objects out in the Oort cloud not planets, Pluto also loses planet status. And it wasn't until that point that they sort of realized what was happening with Pluto, at which point they said, well, Pluto's no longer a planet, it is now the first object in a new class called Plutoids, or dwarf planets. So, that'd be like discovering a new species and naming the entire species after the first example of that species. Pluto is bigger as a Plutoid than it ever would have been as a planet. Because that whole order of objects is named after it. So... It's trying to appease the detractors. Yeah, the bit. <laughs> Anyway, but as far as real science goes, while we're on it, we also had new. We also, of course, had uh, New Horizons, which was a fantastic, fantastic event. We got actually got real pictures of Pluto. And that was awesome. Just, like little blurry dots, and yeah. uh, we learned a lot about it. And, and we learned that Pluto has it. Pluto on it. You know, every year at Hawaiicon, we have a panel on New Horizons. John Lomberg, who um, was very involved in the first Cosmos series, comes and talks about uh, New Horizons. Nice. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so we're all getting free tickets, right? Uh, you guys come up. I can give you guys uh, some press passes. I don't know. I'll, I, how, about, how many of you guys? Uh, I'll, I'll give you two and you can fight over them. <laughs> do, we, do, we, do you give us two, a lightsaber and a batleth? <laughs> oh, hang on. I, I'll win, okay, I will win with the lightsaber hands down. That's not fair to you guys. <laughs> yes. Stuart is our resident Jedi, so... And Eugene is our resident Klingon, so... <laughs> Slice and dice! Well, it's funny that you bring up those two things, because this year we're doing Trek, and next year we're doing Star Wars, so... Nice. And we're hoping to land a big enough grant that we can afford to bring both Luke and Leia. That's what we're... we're that would be spectacular. On. That might make me want to go with that. that maybe yeah. Might want to ditch us. Oh, my God. Get... oh, yeah, that would... And where's this convention at? Oh. Um, it's on the Big Island of Hawaii, and it's on the beach. And we've got it at this hotel that rooms normally go for like three or four hundred dollars a night, but we got the rooms for half price, basically. Nice. So um, it's so pretty. It's just a matter of coming up with the money to go to the Big Island of Hawaii. Yeah. Well, for yeah. to get from Australia to there, it's about a nine hundred to a thousand dollar round trip, if I remember correctly. I could, yeah. Well, I could the, thing, save that. the thing is, I mean, if we're going to go into talking about Hawaii Con, um, I mean, you've all been to other cons, but there is nothing like Hawaii Con. There really isn't. Um, that the kind of FaceTime you have with the celebrities doesn't exist anywhere on the planet. I mean, seriously, like you go to a, a convention and you might get a sit down meet and greet and you might spend a couple hundred bucks for 15 minutes with your biggest celebrity. You'll be sitting at a bar for two hours with your favorite celebrity at Hawaii Con, and they'll be buying you drinks. I mean, it's a very, very different experience. I mean, every day we have tours that you can go out snorkeling or scuba diving with celebrities, or like Jonathan Frakes, uh, number one, Riker, he's going to be doing zip lining. And so your tour will be like four hours long. You'll be hanging out with a celebrity for four hours, having a real adventure with them. And there's really nothing like that. And me, personally, running the convention, uh, do you guys know who Rekha Sharma is? Yes. Played Tori Foster? Yes. I yes, she out, was here in Maryland. I took her out snorkeling every morning. Just wow. me and her. Oh. Nice. The best memories ever. Yeah. Yeah, that's... So, sounds like an absolute so, blast. This yeah, is, it's, 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 it's... It's far beyond anybody's expectations. And, and that's why, you know, we sold a ton of lifetime passes at $2,000 a pop. And... We have, you know, we have 90% of people return to the event. Um, yeah, and people come from all over. We have people coming as far as Austria and the UK. And, yeah. yeah, like I told you in the pre-show pre, pre uh, show, uh, thing, we have some people that ditch OzCon and come up from um, from Australia. Yeah. Well, we, considering OzCon got us an interview with Tim Rose, and, uh, Tim Rose, and we were the first group to be told that he was going to be in the new Star Wars movie, uh -huh. we've got a special affection for... 
as far as Comic Con. <laughs> yeah, you got you got you got to beat them out now, GB. Oh, I got a lot of people. I, I get, <laughs> well, how about I get you, um, Aaron Douglas, from Battlestar Galactica and uh, what, the Returned and Killers. Okay. He played uh, Chief. K- Katie, oh. Sa- Katie, Katie, Katie Sackoff, Katie and Sackoff. I'll think about. It. <laughs> Katie Sackoff. I don't know if you guys are proper enough for Katie Sackoff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't torture her with me either. <laughs> okay then, Patrick Stewart. Uh, Patrick Stewart. Oh. <laughs> he's like he's virtually untouchable. I mean, we really wanted to get him for the convention. It's just, I mean, those guys are just are so high profile. You just yeah, can't get them. Yeah, you know, especially. I mean, our con's t- tiny. Our con is a fifteen hundred people max. You know. Yeah. That, you know, That's so. less than Shoreleaf, isn't it, Eugene? Uh, isn't it Shoreleaf like two thousand? At most, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Shoreleaf's not that big. Um, Farpoint's even smaller than Shore Leave. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just messing anyway. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Icon's definitely on my list of things to do, and I do give you guys a shout out whenever I can on here. But Thanks, we appreciate it's just, it. Yeah, because it's, it's hard to get the word out, you know, against all the big conventions. You know, we're a very small convention, but we do bring twenty big celebrities in. We don't, you know, we yeah. don't mince on. You know, we don't try to. Like pass people off as a bigger celebrity than they are. We really try to get people that have major roles, and uh, and we also create a situation where you get some really good discussions going. You know, like we have a great panel where we stick um, celebrities with scientists and discuss the you know visionary our visionary vision for the future. Yeah. We also have a um, a annual uh, Beyond the Rainbow where we put all you know women and people of color and gay and lesbian actors up there to talk about the state of the industry as far as science fiction and underrepresented people. Uh, we also have a pattern uh, panel called Best Minds where we uh, put up uh, women content creators and they talk about um, where we're going and how we're going to get there um, as far as their representation in the media. I mean, we have some really, really great panels with incredible people. And of course, we have, you know, we do put the science and sci-fi we're bringing 25 scientists that are going to discuss the cutting edge of um, exoplanets and all kinds of stuff that's going on in our universe. Um, and we're probably bringing to bring, bring back Blowback Ferdowsi, who ran the uh, landing of Curiosity. He was the mission specialist on yeah, the Curiosity Yeah, I was just about to say, you guys had that there last year, didn't you? Um, he came in 2014. 2014. Uh, but he's a See, I lose big... track of years. It's just that this blur into one long sort of series yeah. of events. <laughs> but he's a he yeah, is a huge Trek fan, so we have to bring him back. Yeah. So, what was that, Michael? Uh, no, never mind. But let me just say, just this conclusion here is that we're gonna have to have a safe sci-fi meetup at Hawaii Con one year. Oh yeah, definitely. So you, me, Grin, EJ, you know, we can all, Stuart can come, you know, we can all meet everybody. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, Stuart still says, like, yeah, he can come, you just make sure you bring him in, you carry on, it'll be fine. <laughs> Sorry, Stuart, I was thinking first mostly about the three of us because we're the, we're the originals. <laughs> Stuart, you know, as long as you do your job from now on, okay? <laughs> You guys should do a live broadcast from Hawaii Con. Oh, we'd oh my be happy God, to. That'd be amazing. And I, you know, I'll drag a couple celebrities in so you can interview them during the live broadcast. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, okay, let's move let on the, to... Let the fundraising begin, David. <laughs> yeah. Well, considering right now we don't have enough money to keep the servers turned on <laughs> for the webpage. But there is a plan for that, and I can't talk about it yet, but you guys will find out yeah. first here. Um, okay, Stuart, I think it's we should do the news, if you're ready. Okay. Um, yep. Eugene can do his models, and then we'll do the look forward to 2016. Alrighty. Um, I like trying to catch uh, Stuart well, off guard. Uh, sort of fun. No, I'm just trying to... Uh, just, I have a little news, I'm just trying to decide which story I'm going to start with. I'll start with this one. Uh, uh, I'll start with some Doctor Who news, and uh, Stephen Moffat's uh, looking for a new showrunner. Oh, time! Yeah. <laughs> there you go, GB. You can run Hawaii Con and Doctor Who. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> no, maybe, maybe I should throw that one towards Scott from Garrison 7. Hmm? He'd be all well, over that'd it. That'd be interesting. 
Hey, Jay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Oh. Nobility, nobility and Doctor Who crossover. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, moving on to some uh, interesting Flash news. So, uh, Robin with, uh, Robbie and Mel, who we know as um, um, Ronnie Raymond on um, on Flash, is going to be returning, but not as Firestorm. He's going to be returning as Deathstorm. Ooh. I did see something about that. Now, I will explain who Deathstorm is. Uh, Deathstorm is base is uh, the Earth Two version of um, of Firestorm, but evil. Yeah. <laughs> And is married to uh, Killer Frost. Oh, so that might be where Killer Frost comes in, it. Yes. So. And they that, and the, both Arrow and Flash, they're back on the nineteenth, in the twentieth, in the twenty-first. And the twenty-first is um, Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, yes. I was going to say Legends of Tomorrow. Soon. Soon. Um. This is cool. Uh, so Mark Hamill is is going to be in um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, TV show that's running on Nickelodeon. Good. If you said he was going to be TV in the show. if you said the movie, I'd be like, yep. Now now Luke Skywalker is dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's in the TV show and uh, he's going to play a villain. No surprise. <laughs> yeah. He does a <laughs> really good job with the creepy villains. Oh, you're going to love how creepy this character is. He's going to be playing um, Kavaxas. A, a, a demon dragon of the underworld with intense and mythical powers. <sighs> Jedi much? <laughs> yeah, we'll see, technically. Oh yeah, um, and this is cool. I'm going to move on to Star Wars news, because this is actually important Star Wars news. The planet that Luke Skywalker is on at the end of Episode 7, I don't care, it's been three weeks, screw the grace period for spoilers is over. Yeah, the grace period for spoilers is over last week. We spent about an hour talking about the movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the planet has a name. Bob? Because uh, the script was... Because the script was set into... Um, for um, uh, a screenwriters for um, awards and stuff. It's um, called Akhtar. Is it, a, is it the Klingon world? It sounds like a Klingon <laughs> name. <laughs> no, I think it's more Irish. It's like, Ach. <laughs> I can't do Where's Irish the actual accents. island? Where's that island actually? Is, uh, is yeah. it actually off, located off island? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it's um off and... um Skellig Island. A uh, Skellig Island, not off island. God, it's yeah. so painful. To and say. Did, didn't Luke have? Did Mark Hamill have a bit of a fall there and get a bit messed up a little while ago? Yeah, he's fine now. Yeah. O almost fell off the cliff. Yeah. That would have been awkward. <laughs> <laughs> she holds out the lightsaber. Really she holds out the lightsaber really and he falls off. Uh, you know what's in that toilet? Um, that's slightly but, uh, awkward. Yeah, and, and, um, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that wasn't me, by the way. No, I don't know. It wasn't me. I, know, I think that might have been GB or. Uh, yeah. yeah, the cleaning lady's trying to talk to me. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so um, the so the planet is actually the is going to the base where the first Jedi Temple was, which is going to be using the real life monastery that was uh, used that was actually built on the island. Nice. So there is going to actually be proper roots and stuff. So, uh, mo and moving on to Independence Day. Woo! Oh, didn't the and, oh, Michael? Spent. Have you read the comments yeah. on the news article you shared? About Will Smith. Wait, 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 the one where he said he didn't want, that he, yeah. was, he was sad he didn't yeah. surprise his role? Yeah. I have not read the comments, probably because whenever I go look at notifications, they're already looked at by you guys. Yeah, normally by me. Um, oh, yeah. let, me, let, me go take a, let me go take a look while you guys are doing this. There, there's Everyone's like three or four, <laughs> yeah, there's three or four people just oh crying God. about spoilers, it's so funny. What the heck, it's literally not even in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he dies between movies. It's not even. A... <laughs> Come on, yeah. people. It's on the, just like the, it's on the web page. It's just like the complainer of the internet. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to. Completely up. Yeah, we're also gonna have to cover the that website for that at some point. 
I need to look at it. Yeah, so do I. Oh, the, the timeline. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Will Smith could have could have been an independent state, but Inter decided not to. Matter of fact, it says that they've been putting it off because he's been saying no. Well, they probably saved $20 million by not having a minute. 50. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, um, so the rumors that I heard is that he was asking for around 50. And I read one article. Yeah, yeah, I read one article saying that his kids had to be in it too. Yeah. So I am very, very, okay. very, 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 very glad that his kid is not in it. No offense to yeah. Jaden. But every movie that Will Smith beat in that he's beat in has been absolute crap. <laughs> oh, I don't know. The the Karate Kid remake wasn't that bad. The I haven't fa- seen it yet. The fact that you've got to say wasn't that bad proves how bad it really was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Jack- Jackie Chan was good in it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Right, along, and this, is some, this is some funny Star Wars news. Moving back to Star Wars, uh, the origin of uh, of uh, Traitor, the uh, the uh, Shock Baton Riot Control uh, Stormtrooper, has been revealed. He's not getting his own movies. So- Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he was actually. Um, this is actually really interesting. This comes out of um, one of the bo- uh, one of the books, uh, one of the new uh, canon books. Yeah, and uh, back when. Finn uh, was a kid because uh, they took all the because they yeah, um, New Order took kids, trained them from and like brainwashed them. He was part of a um a fire squad with him. Okay. Oh. Whoop. And Skype's gone. <laughs> well, technical issues day today. What is going on? Today is the day for technical issues, apparently. Clearly, Skype didn't want me talking about Star Wars. <laughs> no, no, what happened was, I think GB was in control of the call and he hung up. Oh. So, yeah. Okay, anyway, we are, I didn't actually drop the, the live feed this time. I was just talking so. and I just see the call drop. I'm like, did yeah. I get air- I was like, did I get airlocked? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sitting here listening to you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yep, yep, we'll, we'll get on with it. And then, I'm like... That's different. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so yeah, the, as I was saying, they're, they're a part of a um, a fire squad together, and they're all um, FNs. Yeah. So oh. there was FNs, FN two one nine nine, which is nines, FN uh, zero, and FN two thousand three slip, and then there was FN two one eight seven, which was Finn. Yeah. I was the funny thing is when you started talking about traitor. I was looking at Traitor the Stormtrooper on Facebook. <laughs> oh god, I love that page. I know, it's fantastic. <laughs> he actually it's knows, fa- he the knows one I'm looking at right now has, You were the chosen one! And it's Finn's face and Anakin. And then the Stormtrooper's like, You were supposed to destroy the Resistance, not join them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's also funny that I've come out of? The, uh, the parody accounts on Twitter of um, Emo Kylo Ren and Lonely Luke Skywalker. And yeah. Lonely Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> I know people have too much time on their hands, but they are absolutely hilarious to look at. They are, oh, yeah. They're great. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, um, and uh, interesting with um, the Stormtrooper that dies at the beginning of the movie uh, happens to be a uh, slick part of um, far, part of the uh, fire team that Finn was on, so. Yeah. So that's of how course, he... Of course, they also have James Bond. They're a different Stormtrooper. I know, I'm saying we also have James Bond in that movie. Yeah. Yes, yes. Just... Daniel Craig was just got got Jedi mind tricked by Ray, which I found absolutely <laughs> ironically hilarious. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was great. Uh, so yeah, um... is that all the news, or yeah. or because okay, because I have another piece of news which I think we're forgetting. Okay, Stuart, are you done, or or are you still have more to go? Because I don't want to take no, over. No, you go, you go. Um, let's just say X Files, please. 
this month. The X Files returns for six episodes. Nice. I cannot wait. Like that has become one of my favorite shows of all time. I've literally asked for that to be my only gift for my birthday from everybody combined. Well, I have a confession. <laughs> yes? You want to know a show I've never actually seen? What? I'll give you a hint. You're talking about it. You've, seen, you've never seen X-Files? Nope. So I hadn't seen that until earlier this year. So I don't blame you. So. Except you are older than me, so. Yeah, well, it was... When I was growing up, it was on TV at, like, 11 o'clock at night. And Mum and Dad like, No, go to bed! It's 8.30! I'm like, But I want to watch x No, go to bed! I'm like, Fine. By the way, Eugene can't seem to get back in the call. Or Jimmy. Oh. Which is weird, because it says he's in the call. No, it says he was... Yep, oh, now it says no answer. Now it's now it's gone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this, and this is... I've got some happy news for everyone. Yep. Fantastic Four sequel has been removed from Fox's release schedule. Wait, what? Wasn't th- I thought that was I thought that happened a little while ago. It did. Yeah. Now I'm a little behind on this thing, <laughs> so yeah. I'm catching up. Now the rumors going around is that Marvel got its rights back, though. Yeah, I, I doubt that. Fox has already come out saying that that's not a thing. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is some funny Marvel Marvel vs. Uh, DC news. <laughs> um, Daredevil season two is going to debut March twenty fifth against Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> 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 I wonder how this is gonna go. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I mean, Daredevil season two is a TV or Netflix. I mean, that's gonna be. Oh, I wouldn't equate the two of them in terms of viewership. I would. Daredevil's gonna crap all over Superman, <laughs> and he's crappy one's black a, and white one movie. One's a big blockbuster movie, and one's a niche TV and niche Netflix show. Yeah, and because of how crap the Batman Superman movie is gonna be, Daredevil it's is a, gonna win. It's it's a big blockbuster movie with lots of action, and it's got superheroes. It's going to do better, I guarantee it, as far as viewership goes. It's a black Just and because, white uh, movie. Who makes all black I, and white movies nowadays? All I know is the the car, the Batman's car in this, the model kit looks sweet. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the Batmobile looks awesome. The, also, and Mobius also, has a nice model kit of it coming. Also, I want to address uh, uh, one thing with uh, Batman vs Superman. The uh, the sniper rifle in it. It's not I, a it's not an actual sniper rifle. It's a grappling gun. <laughs> yeah, all those it people is... saying Batman shouldn't have a gun. It's a gr- it's a gr- it's a long range grappling gun. And you, the funny thing is, you actually see him using it in the trailer if you pay attention. Yes. <laughs> Stop complaining, people. Careful, it's a spoiler. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over that point. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh. uh. Some more speculation for Force Awakens. Yep. Is Rey related to Master Kenobi? That was my hypothesis. Because a lot of people, because of the voice, and also the fact that both you and Sir Alec um, have uh, used lines in the flashback. Yeah. Not only that, it's also she masters the mind trick, something that Kenobi is very well known for. Mm. In like a second. Uh, and so, hold on, so, in, I'm trying to remember, and it's been a while since I saw, the only one I didn't rewatch um, in time for The Force Awakens was Return of the Jedi. I'm trying to remember, did Yoda, now Yoda, I know Yoda dies in it, but does he come back as a Yeah, he does well, at the it, end. It, He's it, a Force no, Ghost. No, and and, and, and it can becomes Yoda? younger. I know that. <laughs> but, but, the, but the Force Ghost of Yoda, the only time he shows up as a Force Ghost is in that final scene, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, what I just, another thing, you know how they put... Uh, one of Yoda's lines in the movie too. Yeah. So, I was I was just I just last night finished marathoning the rest of the Clone Wars cartoon series. Now, did you guys all watch that? Yeah. Yes. So yes. You know how the finale has Yoda learn how to you know appear as a Force ghost and everything to help guide um, the future Jedi, and yes. you notice that he didn't do that in any of the in the original trilogy. So that's and that I think that might be setting up for his appearance in the new movies. Yeah. Well, there's rumors. Um, well, there was concept art that um, for Hayden Christensen's Vader be a Force ghost. 
Yes, I know, but I'm saying I think Yoda might come back as well in this. Well, I, I think I think we're gonna see the I think we're gonna see the three. I think we're gonna see I think we're gonna see Vader slash Anakin, Obi Wan and Yoda come back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as long as they do it as well as Big Bang Theory did the, the Force Ghost with talking to Sheldon, <laughs> he pulled out a lightsaber and stabbed himself when Sheldon started talking about Amy. <laughs> I don't want to listen about that. Yeah, <laughs> he's just standing there awkwardly, and Sheldon's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of, of, um, sort of going one step further with Amy." And he's just like, "Just, just give me a second." Pulls out the lightsaber, goes <laughs> through the middle of his wait, own chest, wait, waves that, it, waves it around. Uh, it was in one of the most recent ones. Waves it around, and he goes, "Nope, didn't think so." So funny. There are, I'm also going to mention our two uh, speedrunning events that uh, well, one's currently happening and one's just finished. Yep. Uh, one, the one that just finished was Zeldathon. It is a speed. Uh, well, I wouldn't call it speedrunning. It's more. Um, it's a marathon of all the Zelda, um, Zelda video games ever made. Yep. Um, and all the proceeds uh, went to uh, charity. Uh, Help Hope Live charity and raised um just over two hundred fifty thousand dollars for them. Nice. And currently on at the moment is uh, AGDQ uh, Awesome Games on Quick. Um, they uh, speed run a whole bunch of games that goes on for uh, the like the whole week. Really awesome. You can see a whole different way of um, the games you love played. At the moment, their current total is one hundred eighty-three thousand dollars, and that goes towards uh, the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Yeah. All I want to say is, Michael, is there someone you want to say hello to? Um, no, no, I think it's okay, but <laughs> since, you, since you said so, um, since I, yes, I do know my girlfriend is listening, hello, Jeanette. <laughs> See, Johnny, Thank you, you David. <laughs> what? See, I got this one when Jody started listening, so. Yeah, don't worry, I do it to everybody. Although Jody doesn't uh-huh. listen anymore, so. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. I know, right? So everybody say hi to Jeanette. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more fun to harass you than because we don't know her. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know you guys like to harass me. However, yeah. you know. Speaking of which, it's time to start talking about Lord of the Rings because this is a fantasy podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! I think, I, what I do believe it's time for is for EJ to get to do his models. Uh, EJ. Not EJ, Eugene. Not EJ, Eugene. I'm sorry. Hi, wow. Excuse me. Yeah, hey, I, I think I think Michael has caught my name be broken bug. <laughs> God, thanks, David. <laughs> Somebody beat that guy. Yeah. Okay, time for the model report. Okay, for the model report, uh, we're going to cover two things. Uh, first one I'm going to cover is just a brief reminder for everyone who's jumped on the um, um, I support Axonar, or because anybody that's not aware... Um, oh, yeah, we forgot to Axonar, mention that in the news. Well... <laughs> Um, Axanar was sued by CBS and Paramount Pictures this week, and there's been a lot going on with that, so we'll bring people up to date on that next week. As soon as we know, but, as soon as we've got something worth <laughs> reporting, we'll report it. Right. But there's been a lot of people saying and, you know, that they're not going to support or, um, Paramount Pictures and this and that. And I did see a couple reports of people saying, you know, not to buy anything associated with Star Trek. Well, I would like to remind people that any of the model kits on the shelves at your local hobby shop, any money that they that was already given to Paramount Pictures is long gone at that point because what what your hobby shop paid for them, that is what they paid. The, the, so the hobby shop really has nothing to do with the lawsuit. So please keep that in mind when you're you're buying models. So buy models oh. from Eugene, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other portion of my report is um, Monarch Models is, has closed their doors. Um, they came in came out right after Polar Lights. I closed their doors a number of years ago, and they did a lot of horror and monster theme and a little bit of science fiction. So 
Um, you can still find their kits available at hobby shops, um, or they can still be special ordered in most cases. Um, I plan to at least get a couple of them in at Perry County Hobbies, but I don't have any at the moment. My distributor still has some, so I will be getting a few in. Okay. And that's my report. Yep. yep. Done? Done. Sweet. Yep. Huh? Is this, that, that, that's it? That that's was it. That was quick. <laughs> well, I looked at the time, and uh, because of uh, Skype acting up, and EJ's, or not EJ, uh, Scarecrow's <laughs> running, running long. I blame Michael. Yeah. I blame David. I blame Michael. I blame I David. Blame Michael. You're overruled. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so so I, I, I'm sure secretly at the other end, um, Jeanette is also saying I blame Michael. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at the chat actually to see that. I was like, hey, wait a second. <laughs> So, anyway, um, moving on to what are we looking forward to in 2016? Obviously, Deadpool. Captain Deadpool's definitely Deadpool. Captain America: Civil War and the Lego kits that come with that. I'm looking forward to both of those. I am. Uh, I am looking forward to Star Trek Beyond just because I really, really, really hope it's something better. Yeah, I'm looking forward well, to Star I'm Trek saying, Beyond, but flares. yeah. Look, uh, this isn't Abrams. This isn't Abrams directing it, so we have a chance to get less lens flares. producing it. Yeah, but still. I mean, okay. So, I mean, also, although it's not really so much looking forward to it in 2016, it's looking forward to the end of 2016, is the new series coming out in, in January 2017. Yep. Yeah. Uh... I'm looking forward to, or to Legend, Legends of Tomorrow. <laughs> Did you just read the message? <laughs> My girlfriend just said everything is Michael's fault. <laughs> Throw him under the bus, we <laughs> I knew it. I knew that was what you were laughing at, David. <laughs> it, it popped up when I read it. I was like, yeah, just, just this game. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> so. I, I'm hoping the X Files thing goes well. Yeah. Oh, I think it will. Everything I've seen so far makes it look fantastic. Oh, yeah. The X-Files thing's going to be good. We've got, um... Oh, that's Sherlock. Did you guys watch Sherlock yet? Yes, and I haven't... Did you no, guys I see haven't. the winter special? Because I have not seen it. The web special? No, the, the internet. The, the, the winter special. special. The, oh, the Christmas special. The Christmas special for Sherlock. Yeah, I've seen that. It was in cinemas. Oh, was it... How was it? I didn't get a chance to see um, it. Um... It was... Different? But was it good? It was It was definitely Sherlock. Okay. I'll take that as a good thing. So, it's different and it's weird and I can understand why some people don't like it. I can. It does get a little bit weird near the end, but other than that, it is good. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be watching that tonight. Yeah. The event I'm looking forward to is um, Star Wars Celebration in London because we're going to get a lot of Rogue... Because we have to get a lot of Rogue One news out of that. Oh, that should be good. Indeed. And randomly, we have oh, a Scarecrow. Oh, look, finally decided to join. I'm sorry, I was asleep. I had a close last night. <laughs> Scarecrow joins us with literally ten minutes left on the podcast. Because we started <laughs> a little so bit late. Made it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about what we're looking forward to in 2016. But yeah, um, Star Wars Celebration, uh, I'm going to make a very... I'm going to make a prediction of what we're going to get. Yep. I think we're going to get a teaser for eight. Yep. I think we're going to get a full-blown trailer for Rogue One. Yep. And I actually expect a trailer for Rogue One to drop and during maybe, Rebels. And maybe... Yeah, uh, um, And maybe DLC needs for Battlefront, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm looking forward to next year, really, probably for... Like, specifically next year, is, of course, Deadpool, but also um, Season 2, really, of Killjoys. I loved that show oh, yeah. so much. I'm going to love to see what they're going to do with Dark Matter. Killjoys, Dark Matter. Dark Matter's going to be good, too, but I love Killjoys. Yeah. Definitely going to be good to see where they go with those. Michael, are you eating the microphone again? Yes. No, I'm not eating the microphone, just the headset. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, I'm hungry. Yeah. Okay. Jeanette hasn't fed I'm me. I'm gonna... I haven't had breakfast yet, so... <laughs> so, anyway. Scarecrow, since you finally decided to join us, what are you looking forward to this year? I honestly have no bloody idea, apart from Independence Day. <laughs> That's actually a fair point. Independence Day is pretty much going to be the crown jewel of this coming year for, for most of us. Yeah, it, Independence Day is going to be one of those movies that is either spectacularly awesome in every way, shape, and form. Or, or absolutely horrible. Oh god, oh god, kill it with fire. <laughs> <laughs> and everything so far makes it look like it's the first one. Yeah, that, which actually be, concerns me. X-Men, I don't have high standards I for right now. It's going to be, oh god, oh god, kill it with fire. Oh yeah, X-Men is going to be, oh god, oh god, kill it with fire. Um, oh, shit, that's news I've got to report on. Shit. What? Oh, oh the the um potentially they're, they're teasing the Dark Phoenix with um the new with new Gene. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I am looking forward to Civil War as well. Oh yeah, Civil War definitely. Civil War's going to be see... good. Doctor Strange. Oh, oh my no. god. It looks beautiful. Yeah. Alpha and everything. Yeah. Gorgeous. See, it's we're at that point where I wish I had a TARDIS so I could jump forward ten years and then just watch. All of the Marvel movies. And then the Star Wars movies. Oh yeah, and all the Star Wars movies. <laughs> and the Star Trek movies. No. No. No? No. And then the Stargate movies. The Stargate movies, yes! So, yeah. But yeah, it's... Waiting for Marvel movies is like waiting for your next hit. It just takes so long. <laughs> no, that's, no, 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 no. That's waiting for new Sherlock. It's... No, no, no. Waiting for New Sherlock is... There's nothing really comparable to Waiting for New Sherlock. I can't, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to Jeremy Clarkson an analogy here and it's not working. Waiting for New Sherlock is like is like waiting for um, Star Trek to be good again. <laughs> oh. No, but like, oh, but you snap. know all these memes hey, that always hey, talk about... You know it's true. I'm not, I'm not dis- not disagreeing, I'm just saying, oh snap. <laughs> but you know all those memes that, talk, that include, you know, you know... The year twenty fifty five, year season six, seventy eight, or whatever of, of Doctor Who's aired, whatever season of Supernatural, and then season four of Sherlock well, yet Sherlock. to be announced. <laughs> and but but you realize in a year or two, that's gonna be in about a year, that's going to be pointless. Now they're gonna have to make a new meme for season five. Yeah, and it's they're gonna take just as long. See, the funny thing is, <laughs> Benedict Cumberpatch loves Sherlock so much that he goes out of his way to be involved with it again, like. So the main reason that it's been delayed getting season three and delayed season four was The Hobbit and Doctor Strange. But Cumberbatch loves it so much that even in 20 years' time, he'll probably still be playing it. And as long as it's <laughs> as good, good as it is now, I won't complain. As long as he ages well. Yeah. So. Now, i got a feeling Cumberbatch is going to be next Christopher Lee. The next sort of... <laughs> British guy in everything that is spectacular in every way. So. There was something else I had on my mind that I meant to say and I completely blanked on what it was. Yeah. What else is, what else is coming out this year? Suicide Squad, which no one really cares. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, it's, you're going to not know who I am anymore, but um, Harry Potter. What? Kill him the now. Fantastic oh, they, um, the and where to find them. And where to find them. What? The new Harry Potter movie. It, it's not actually Harry Potter. It's just it's set, not Harry Potter, set, but it's, it's in that in universe. universe. But it's based in America. My brain hurts. Do you not know about this? No, because it's Harry Potter, and I don't care about Harry Potter. Uh, it's like it's like it's like it's like, it's like mentioning a Twilight movie to me. My brain just goes click. Whoa! 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 whoa. 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 Okay, it's give me the... Twilight. Give me the information because I know Mayron's going to want it. I know Amy's going to want it in a when she gets home in a couple of hours. There's I mean, a trailer a for like trailer drop for yeah. like last year. Like last year. Like, I don't think she's even seen that. So can someone drop that for me so I can? Oh uh, yeah, I'll find it. Uh-huh. Thank you. That's the whole. That's the whole point of having a news guy. Is if we need to look up something, news guy, do the thing. <laughs> get looking, do the boy. thing. Make it so. <laughs> uh, sorry about that, guys. Oh. By the way, ha- has yeah. anybody, s- being we're running late today, has anybody seen the uh, how how low the reviews are for Star Trek Beyond on the Paramount website? <laughs> wait, 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 you mean the reviews of the trailer? Yeah. Oh, the reviews of the trailer. 
Oh, yeah, they're really I did, I did bad. Say, I did call Star Trek Beyond Saving. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, to stick, I'm going to stick by well, that. Well, no, no. Do you guys notice that when the logo comes up on the screen at the end of the trailer, it shows Beyond Star Trek? Beyond goes first. Yeah. It's still Beyond Saving. Yeah. Well, that's the point. It's Beyond but Star it's Trek. Kind of- about 50% of the reviews on it are basically hated it. Yeah. And well, even the even the cast hated it. Yeah. So, I that, think it's another I think thing. it's I think Star Trek Beyond might have a classic case of Microsoft syndrome. Um, when the Xbox One was released, they did a really crappy job explaining of how, explaining how awesome it was going to be because the PR department did not talk very well the technology side of things, and they focused on all of the wrong things. And Mm -hmm. the Star Trek Beyond trailer is almost done exactly the same thing. It's focused on nothing to do with Star Trek and just explosions. And and everyone's like, what the hell? Star Trek isn't an action series. Why are you pushing it as an action series? And that's the big problem. The other flip side being, if they came out and it was just all techno babble, you would push the general public away from it because they'd be like, "I don't want to watch this; it's all techno crap." And mm-hmm. yeah, so you've got it—they're trying to walk a fine line between actually making Star Trek popular and stopping the nerd rage. And unfortunately, you can't have both. Oh, I just thought of the thing I was going to say before. Um, it has to do with Star Trek. It has to do with kind of this. Um, so it was more related to the Axanar and the new series. Has anybody else thought that perhaps the reason they're going after Axanar is maybe because it's set in the same timeline as time period as what they're trying to do in this new series, the Klingon War? Because that's kind of what Into Darkness was hinting at, was more of a focus on Klingons, and then obviously it's not happening. Um, so I was wondering if maybe you guys think it's going to deal more with the Klingon War around General Izar's time. Yeah, or Admiral I, Izar's time. I, I don't know. I think Axanar became very polarized when it sort of shifted itself from the original timeline or whatever you want to call it to the new timeline the abrams line and because they're in the abrams line they've already pissed off a lot of fans just by doing that wait when did they do this they did it ages ago no yeah no, their stuff is still no everything mm. in the trailer was still original timeline yeah this this happens before that event yeah, yeah everything it's said about 10 10 or 15 years beforehand. Yeah, I know. Um, but uh, put it this way, the largest amount of people that I've heard against Axena all scream that it's in the J.J. Abrams universe, therefore it sucks. I have not heard it's that. Not. I haven't... I've, I've watched it. It's not in the J.J. universe. It's, it's in the not. original Roddenberry universe. No. These guys yeah. just don't have... need to pull their heads out of their collective asses. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway... Apologies for the language, I mean, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, you, I mean, so we're all thinking the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anyway, I think... If, unless there's anything else we need to touch on? Mm, nope. 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 Anyone else? Nope. Nope, nothing coming to my mind. Alright, sweet. Done. We're done for the day. Alright. See you guys later. Thank you for, for joining us Bye. on this pointless ramble. Jeanette, we will catch you next week. <laughs> yeah, we get Jeanette on the podcast. Hey, we, 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 we gotta get we gotta get Jody on the podcast first. No, <laughs> we can get them both at the same time. No, <laughs> that I refuse to happen. <laughs> um, we managed to pull off a ladies-only sci-fi one. <laughs> oh, primary <laughs> host. <laughs> Us relegated to the chat room. <laughs> Nothing would get to- No one would do the news. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm. To be perfectly honest, considering how many feminists I've already pissed off today, I'm just going to leave that the fuck alone and finish the podcast. <laughs> Alright, catch you guys later. Alright, Dave. Have a good one, mate. Bye. Bye.